and welcome back everybody to Plugin Development 101 Part 6 where we are building our to-do plugin with Strapi version 4. Now if this is the first video you're watching, please check out the cards above for the previous videos that we have made because this lesson is contingent upon what we learned before. Today we're going to focus on how to make front-end requests in our plugin. We're also going to add a nice spinner to make sure that when we're loading data we have a beautiful spinner in our UI. We're also going to create our fetch data function and use effect when our component loads to fetch that initial data. And then we're going to add a request calls to our previous functions that we created as placeholders for functionality like to add a to-do, delete a to-do, or update to-do, or toggle a to-do if it's done or not. And then we're going to take a look on what's next. Now, because we're going to be working on the front-end portion of our plugin, we want to make sure that we run our application using the Yarn development watch admin flag. Once you start the application, it's going to open in port 8000. Once it loads up for you and you haven't logged in yet, go ahead and log in. Once we're logged in, let's take a look at the current state of our plugin. Currently, we have our front end made, but we haven't yet hooked up the back end endpoints that we created in last video to the front end of our application. That is what we're going to do today. So going into our code, we could first take a look at source, plugins, and look at server just to kind of show you where we created our route last video, we created our controllers and we created our services. But now we want to connect all of this together to our front end. So remember when working in the front end, we are mainly focusing on the admin folder. So inside our source folder, let's create a new folder called API. And inside the API, let's make a new file called todo.js. Now, Strapi has a request method that comes with its Strapi helper plugin, which is included. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that in. What that allows us to do is to create our requests. So what I'm going to do is to start here and we're going to create an empty object called to do requests. And inside here, we're going to put all of our request methods that we want to use. To get us started, the first one is going to be to get Get all of our to do's and it's going to be on a sync function which is going to return and we're going to await our request and inside our request we're going to pass our URL for our to do endpoint for finding all and we could remember that we used in our path in our routes to do slash find and inside here we're going to pass the method which is going to be get. So before we get too far, let's test this request out. So let's go to pages, our home page index file, and this is where all of our front end UI lives. The first thing we're going to do is import our loading component, which is provided by our Strapi helper plugin. And what I'm going to do is use this loading page indicator right before our return statement. So whenever we have loading state, we will see the loading indicator page. And to make sure that we do have that state, let's bring that state in and add it in the top of the code here. So right on line 29, we're going to create our is loading state and we'll have a set is loading using the use state. And initially we're going to set it to true. So now let's take a look at UI and what you will see is you'll see this loading spinner which keeps going and going and going. All right, so let's go back into our code and then we're going to create our initial function that will fetch data for us that we could use initially when our component loads and then we could also use it to refetch our data. So it's going to be on a sync error function. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to check if we are loading and if we're not, Let's make sure we set is loading to true. Next, what we want to do is we want to call our request function that we created and we're going to await for it. And it's coming from our to do request dot get all to do's. And once we get that data back, let's set that data to state and set set is loading to false. Now we want this to initially happen when our component loads. So let's put that into our use effect. We're gonna call it asynchronously. 
and inside here we're going to await for our fetch data function that we just created and more importantly what we want to make sure is that it only runs once so let's put an empty dependency array and the last thing we want to do we want to import this from our api so let's go to the top of our code and here we're going to import our to do request and it's going to come from our to do. Perfect. And you know what? Let's go ahead and make this plural. So change to do requests here to plural because that makes more sense. And let's go to our API to do's and we're going to call it requests because it's our to do requests multiple. So now moment of truth. Let's go back to our code and refresh. And what is it complaining about? Always complaining. Oh, we forgot to define use effect on top of our code. So back in our index after use state, let's do use effect. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to our code. It's going to refresh and get all to do's is undefined so let's go back wow this is very embarrassing so we are assuming that we want to get all to do's from our to do requests so let's see if we spell that correctly so in our to do api so get all to do's is spelled right and the issue is that we forgot to export it so let's go ahead export default our to do requests and now that should fix our error and let's go back and boom look at that we are now getting our to do's let's go ahead into our content manager here and let's just delete all of these right for now let's just to see confirm so now we don't have any to do's go back to our to do perfect so now we have our blank to do state so things are working great minus those minor mistakes but we got this so now let's go ahead back to our api to do's.js file and finish up all of our requests and to finish up i'm just going to copy and paste the code snippets if you're familiar with fetch or using axios this is very similar so in this add to do example we're passing our url as well as the method and the data in the body that we want to post. And this pattern repeats in the rest of the code. And I'm going to add this in the notes that you'll be able to find in the description below. And finally, let's go to our homepage and we had our placeholder functions that we were using before. So what we're going to do, we're going to again, refactor them to utilize our get requests functions that we just created. I'm just gonna copy and paste the code and then walk you through it. It's going to be very similar to what we did. So here here. So we're going to call our to do request at to do function. And after that's complete, we're going to refetch our data for toggle to do. We are going to call our toggle to do method from our to do request API that we created. Basically all of our placeholder functions are going to call our to do requests methods that we just created. So for delete to do, we're going to call our delete to do method and then refetch the data. And finally for edit to do. We are going to call our edit to do method, passing the ID and data that we want to change. And then again, we're going to refetch our data. So the main takeaway here is that we learn about using the request method from Strapi Helper plugin that allows us to fetch our data from our plugin server API. So let's go back to our home index.js file and let's remove nano IDs since we don't need them anymore. And finally, let's go to our main application and test it out. So I'm gonna add a to-do, say first to-do, click add. So that seems to work. Let's add another to-do, hi there. I guess these are not really to-dos, but that works. Can we check them? Yes, we can. And let's check in our content manager here. And look, we're getting all those to-dos that we're adding. That is working fantastic. So how about if we check this one? Look at that, true, true. Let's check our edit functionality. So I'm gonna edit first to-do, but not really. Save, let's check. Wow, that's working great. And let's go ahead and check our delete functionality delete, delete, content manager. Perfect, that works so good. And the final thing we wanna do, we don't wanna show this in our collection types because this is now managed by our to-do plugin that we created. So for the final touch, let's go back into our code and we're going to go into our server folder, we're going to go into our content types and inside our to-do schema, we're going to find our plugin options and what we're going to do is set visible for false 
files. And that way, when we come back to our UI, go to Content Manager, our to-do is no longer visible. And we only kept it there just to make sure that it works. And the last thing I want to show you, when we were testing our API, we allowed our routes to not require authentication. So whenever someone hits send here, you're able to get the data back. So we're going to fix that. We're going to go inside our code and go into our routes, index.js file, and let's remove for auth, just completely remove it for now. And that will automatically require authorization. And now let's go back. And whenever I try to make the same request, now it's going to say unauthorized error, missing or invalid credentials. But when we go to our application, it still works because we are logged in as an admin user. So I'm still able to create a to-do. I'm able to still perform all the functionality that we did before and it still works, but I can't do that now publicly, which is great. We did it. Wow, that was a lot of fun. I hope you had as much fun as I did watching the videos as I did making them. I really appreciate you giving us your time. Thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this video series introducing plugin development to beginners. If you're looking to learn more, don't be shy. If you're not a member of our Discord, go ahead and join our Discord. Not only can you ask questions, but you could also help somebody out who has questions as well. You could also check out our forum, a lot of great information and help there. And we also have our plugin resource page, which has documentation that is useful in creating your plugins that goes into a lot more detailed questions that you may have. We also have guides and tutorials and we're constantly adding new resources to this page. So if you're looking to build plugins, make sure you bookmark this page. You could also follow Strapi and GitHub unless you're already following and giving back to this awesome community and contributing, which is awesome but if you're new definitely check out our github and what's awesome about strapping because it's open source you're able to see the code and see the examples and peer under the hood and actually help out as well and we also have an amazing blog which has a lot of great tutorials and recently maxime released his six part blog about creating plugins which goes in a lot more detail and introduces some more advanced or intermediate concepts so go ahead and check it out after watching these videos and finally, thanks again. Really appreciate it. If you have any feedback for me or other courses that you want to see in the future, let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to making more videos for you. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to continue releasing awesome videos like this one. And if for some reason you want to follow me on Twitter, you could find me at Coding30. But with that being said, I hope you all have a great weekend, great day, great week, wherever time it is for you, and that you continue you building cool awesome things with strappy and with that i will see you in the next video